I've measured 24 derailleurs, shifters, and cassettes now, and the biggest thing I've discovered is that getting a shifter, derailleur, chain, and cassette to work together is more of an art than a science. Traditionally, people look to average cable pull, average pull ratio, and average cog pitch as a guide. Average cable pull is how much cable the shifter pulls per click on average. We only need to consider the middle clicks. The clicks on the ends of the range often are much larger than those in the middle. The larger cable pull amounts at the ends allow the derailleur limit screws to control the position, not the shifter. Average pull ratio is how far the jockey wheel moves per millimeter of cable pull on average. Average cog pitch is the distance between the center of adjacent cogs on the cassette on average. The idea is that you can multiply the average cable pull and the average derailleur pull ratio. The shifter, derailleur, and cassette are compatible if the result is equal to the average cog pitch of the cassette. In my measurements, I find that this is practically never true. The average cable pull times the average pull ratio is never equal to the average cog pitch. Let me demonstrate by doing some calculations for you. Shimano says that their SL M5100 shifter is compatible with the RD M4120 derailleur and an 11 speed cassette. I've measured the shifter and derailleur and I'm fairly certain of the average cog pitch of the cassette. The shifter has an average cable pull of 3.4 millimeters. The derailleur has an average pull ratio of 1.08. The cassette has an average cog pitch of 3.74 millimeters. However, the jockey only moves 3.67 millimeters per click on average. This is 1.8% smaller than we would expect. But maybe the result is a fluke. Conveniently, I also have an SL M4100 shifter that Shimano says is compatible with the same derailleur. I can redo this calculation for this 10 speed shifter and see if we get a different result. The shifter has an average cable pull of 3.48 millimeters, and the cassette has an average cog pitch of 3.95 millimeters. The derailleur is the same as before. However, the jockey only moves 3.76 millimeters per click, 4.8% smaller than we would expect. This pattern holds up among nearly all of the groups that I've tested. I'm still working on measuring more components, so some groups may not work this way. However, this trend of shifting slightly less than the cog pitch shows up whether you're looking at Shimano or SRAM, and it shows up whether you're looking at mountain or road components. The only exception to this pattern that I've discovered appears to be the Shimano Ultegra RX group, composed of the STR8020 shifter, RD RX800 derailleur, and an 11 speed cassette. I don't have a theory for this, but I hope to learn more in the future. So far, we've been looking at a lot of numbers. What does this difference actually look like? I've made a simple diagram showing what this looks like. You can see the cogs on the left, the positions of the jockey wheel on the right, and the chain linking the two. The jockey moves a smaller distance than the distance between the cogs. As a result, the jockey is aligned with the middle cog of the cassette, but is slightly out of line with the inner and outer cogs. This description aligns with the advice in the shop manual for setting up the Shimano 105 derailleur. When in the second smallest cog, Shimano advises that the jockey should be as far inboard towards the wheel as possible without creating any noise. The advice in the shop manual matches our understanding that Shimano designed the jockey to move less distance than the cog pitch. So how do we determine compatibility now? I propose updating our calculation to include a multiplier. The components are likely to be compatible as long as the average cable pull times the average pull ratio times the motion multiplier is about equal to the cog pitch. Of course, this equation is still an approximation, so some combinations may fit the equation and still not work properly. Use at your own risk. I've come up with some ranges for the motion multiplier based on my data. A conservative estimate would place it at 1.02 plus or minus 0.02. A broader estimate would increase that range to plus or minus 0.04. So how does this work in practice? Let's go back to our Dior 11 speed example. Using our multiplier, we now get an ideal cog pitch of 3.74 millimeters, exactly in line with the average cog pitch of an 11 speed Shimano cassette. Using the conservative compatibility numbers, 
we also get a range of cog pitches that may work from as low as 3.71 millimeters up to 3.82 millimeters. Let's look at an actual mixed drivetrain. Let's consider whether a SRAM Apex One 11 speed shifter, a SRAM GX 10 speed derailleur, and a 10 speed Shimano cassette could be compatible. Using the conservative compatibility numbers, we see that the 10 speed cog pitch of 3.95 millimeters is within the compatibility range for this combination. In fact, this is the combination that I have on my bicycle. After more than 500 miles, I can confirm that it works well. Revisiting Dior 10 speed, we see that using the conservative range for the motion multiplier would tell us that this shouldn't be compatible. Our calculated compatibility range is far too low for a 10 speed cassette. Of course, Shimano says that they are and supports their product, so we know that they must be compatible. Using the broader range of numbers for the motion ratio would fix this problem. I think this highlights how much of a simplification this calculation is, and how much thought, design, and testing Shimano and other manufacturers put into their drivetrains. This calculation should only be used as a guide, not as a perfect model. So what's next? In my measurement videos, I naively did not give you average values for cable pull or pull ratio. I will be going back and re-recording all of my previous measurement videos to fix that. It should be apparent that I have lots more measurement videos to record. Thank you so much to the users Ubiquity and Chaz Warp Drive of the Pathless Pedal Discord for letting me borrow so many shifters and derailers to measure. I also hope to provide more discussions on derailleur design. I'd especially like to talk about derailleur yaw, and I hope to talk about my discoveries as I measure more components. Thank you for watching.